A very good afternoon to you. Thanks for joining us the way you always join us on this program, Africa This Course on Independent Television. My name is Evan Sunoko here. Today on the program, we are going to be looking at Africa just the way we do always on this show. And of course, uh, talk about uh, issues on the continent of Africa. Today, we are going to be looking at uh, some key uh, developmental issues uh, in Africa. And of course, we'll see how the real costs are, the effects of these uh, developmental issues. And of course, uh, the possible solutions to uh, these issues. Where some say that some of these uh, developmental issues are self uh, uh, uh You know, maybe we decided to... Uh, you know, achieve and uh, decide to inhibit this problem on our own, and why some say that uh, uh, the kind of developmental issues that Africa is facing as a continent, they are not far fetched from uh, the effects. Uh, maybe uh, some of the spillover of the colonialism that uh, yeah. we went through on the continent of Africa. We are going to be looking at all this today on the program Africa Discuss. And of course, we are so privileged to have Nurita, the Syria author, and of course, uh, the international uh, conflict resolution expert, Nurita Igbotako. So, you welcome to the program Africa Discuss. It's a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Okay. All right. So, just as we do before we hit uh, the discussion, we check uh, some major headlines uh, that uh, we are following at this time, some major headlines that uh, you know, making the news around the continent of Africa. And uh, the very first one we've got uh, this afternoon has to do with uh, Ivory Coast, where we read that uh, former Ivory Coast uh, uh, Prime Minister, talking about uh, Guillermo uh, Soro, says uh, we end self-imposed exile. That's uh, the very first uh, headline that uh, we are following at uh, this time. Former Ivory Coast uh, uh, PM uh, Guillermo Soro says uh, we end, uh, we'll end uh, self, uh, self-imposed exile on uh, the uh, headlines uh, that we're following now. Then, of course, we have the one that uh, have to do, that has to do with uh, fighting, where we have uh, that uh, fighting resumes in Mali between army and rebel uh, groups in key northern area. That has to do with the uh, headline at Tulu. Fighting resumes in Mali between army and rebel uh, groups in key uh, northern area. Uh, you can see the headline there. You can see uh, some army uh, vehicles are there. Then uh, also we read that uh, uh, the militia at uh, the center of the Darfur genocide and of course uh, kills hundreds in uh, Sudan. Remember that uh, what has been going on in Sudan, uh, most especially in South Sudan, uh, whereby the military junta is uh, there in Sudan. The militia at uh, the center of the Darfur genocide and kills uh, hundreds in uh, Sudan. You get a copy of uh, you know, you can Google so that uh, you can read as you get along. Then also, too, we have a headline uh, that has to do with uh, the legacy. Okay, I remember this particular one, in, in, uh, India and me now, the late India and me. Mm -hmm. I remember one where led to one man that uh, uh, Ugandans cannot uh, uh, for, forget him, you know, in a hurry. Uh, you know, he was, uh, he was a former military head of state in Uganda. And uh, he's so notorious for some, uh, you know, ways that he handled issues. You know, the way he related to uh, his fellow citizen men, uh, fellow citizen, uh, you know, uh, people in uh, uh, Uganda. Some people will say that uh, uh, he was quite uh, uh, very handy. And uh, some will say that his government was so, so uh, harsh on the people. So legacy of late India me, uh, Dada. That's uh, divides uh, Uga Ugandans now. So big headline that, uh, that uh, we're interested in. Then uh, the fifth one here, we have Nigerian, uh, Nigerian men killed. Uh, Nigerian man killed in test on bullets approved uh, term. We have to make this uh, you know, for you this afternoon because for those people that we tell you that, look, they've got one thing or the other and uh, they can actually face a uh, bullet gun. So it's on the major headline in Africa this course uh, this afternoon that Nigerian man killed a test on bullets approved uh, charm. So please don't be deceived. Don't any per any person tell you that uh, he or she has made some charm uh, for you that uh, he can face some form of uh, uh, gunshots and all that. So that's not good. All right, so Nuita Ibutako, you're welcome one more time on the show. It's a pleasure. So, Thank you. Yeah, we're looking at uh, Africa's uh, developmental issues, uh, just as uh, what we say that uh, some persons trying to characterize uh, the issues that we are going through on the continent of Africa, political issues, economic issues, and of course, uh, you know, 
issues that ordinarily they have actually uh, reduced the continents. Uh, you know, when you compare Africa as a continent with other continents of the world, uh, they've reduced Africa as it were. So from your own point of view, uh, what do you where do you, do you think we can trace uh, these uh, issues to? Where can we anchor it on? Well, uh, the underdevelopment of Africa is uh, dialectic. It's dialectic in the sense that uh, people have done a lot of research and it is very clear that uh, uh, the problem in Africa are the a root in uh, colonialism. You know, the colonial masters they came prepared and uh, turned things upside down for Africans and Africans. And uh, for several decades now, uh, it's, it's unfortunate that uh, Africa is still where it is, in spite of. Uh, the huge uh, human resources, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, minerals deposits, uh, almost uh, uh, unquantifiable mineral resources in Africa, uh, human resources, you know, ecological resources, and several other gifts. Uh, Africa is endowed, you know, in spite of this endowment, you know, Africa is in a sorry state. Yeah. The story state because when the colonialists came, they you know they they, t they use ethnicity, you know they use it. They brought a knife to start tearing Africa to pieces mm -hmm. uh, without regard to ethnic and uh, sovereignty at that time. So after several years of uh, colonialism, uh, the the colonialists in the francophone in the anglophone in the northern part of the Africa and the rest, they refuse to leave Africa alone. Mm. And uh, the Africans, African leaders, they have no head matters. In spite of the, uh, the, the evil that uh, colonialism infected on Africa and Africans, but well, Africans post, post independent Africa, mm. you know, we are still in the shadow of uh, misgovernance shadow of, uh, you know, tragedy. For me, I think uh, it's, it, Africa is a tragedy, so to say, mm. because in terms of all the resources, human resources, you know, uh, raw materials that are, that, are, uh, that, are, that, that are abundant in Africa, well, that's where we are. Okay. You know, we have infrastructural deficit, the AK system is almost zero, the, 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 the educational system is underfunded. Uh, there is food insecurity. Uh, and there is no democracy, so to say. Democracy we have in Africa uh, is, is a phony democracy. Mm. It's, it's, not a, it's, a, it's, a, it's not a genuine democracy. Because the democracy we have have been bastardized by Africans you know, with the help of Western powers, imperialists and colonialists, who, who wanted to who are still interested in African, uh, you know, wet. Because what Africa is endowed with. So a friend was telling me, one of my friends who, who resides in Dakota in the United States, mm. he said, what, if, if, if United States, half, the half of what Nigeria, half. <laughs> he said, he said, United States will be greater than what in Nigeria. In terms of resources. In terms of resources. Yeah. In terms of the land mass. Mm. I know the United States is bigger than, America, bigger than Nigeria. Nigeria is like a state, like a Texas, that's that state. Mm. Nigeria is a state in America. In the US, but the in the US, US yeah. 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 Yeah, like uh, Texas, for instance, is, 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 a, is a bit bigger than Nigeria. But in spite of the big landmass in America, the resources in Africa, in Nigeria, is unquantifiable. So uh, it, it, it's a sorry state that uh, bad governance, bad leaders, uh, who who have been playing on uh, the ethnic card, religious card. Mm. They play it to the death of Africa. They don't, they, they, they don't carry everybody along. Okay. They, you know, so it's a, it's a, it's a, we are, Africa is in a deep shit. Mm. 
Uh, we don't use such <laughs> words, yeah. <laughs> well, well, I, 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 when I say deep shit, uh, no, no, we, we, uh, we, so we have to it's, take it's it my opinion. Now. I know, but the word shit. Is, okay, it's, Africa it's, is. Uh, well, it, we say, you, you've tried to describe it, uh -huh. now, so, so but the word shit is not. Okay, okay, maybe uh, Africa in the media space. Where we are, we are, we are far backward. Okay. All right, so but, but let's look at it from another dimension now, because uh, a while ago you were trying to anchor it on uh, on the fact that. Uh, uh, most of the developmental problems that we are facing on the continent of Africa, uh, maybe we got them from, we inherited them from our colonial masters. masters yes. or our colonial masters led us to uh, the big problems that we are facing now. But uh, uh, even some of the colonial masters uh, that colonized uh, most nations in Africa, uh, they were also colonized by uh, other countries. Take, for example, the U.S. that colonized uh, uh, Liberia. They were colonized by the Britain. Uh, so, uh, but what is what is wrong with most? What do you think is wrong with most <laughs> African nations? That uh, uh, why other nations of the world that were colonized by uh, these same colonial masters that we try to fight now, they've since advanced. But you still find some of these African countries, uh, they they still remain where they are. What, what is it? Well, the problem is uh, not far fetched, as I said earlier. Uh, the the, col the colonial masters. They use an uh, ethnic card mm -hmm. to, 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 to badastize the African landscape, mm -hmm. north, south, and west. Mm -hmm. They use the ethnic card. Mm -hmm. they, they, they play the ethnic thing to, you know, to, to, to bring other development to Africa and Africans. Mm -hmm. And quite unfortunately, when Africans took over, for instance in Nigeria, mm -hmm. they started playing the, the ethnic thing. For instance, in Nigeria, I wonder what we know where it stood. Mm. Was in the west, mm. but we know that was in the east. Uh, uh, what is his name? Uh, Tafa Balewa. The, the, the famous uh, sorry, the Swadana, uh, Amadou, uh, uh, Amadou uh, Belo. Yeah. They all play the ethnic thing, and they did not work. They, they all, they all, they all, they all withdrawn to their ethnic cocoon. They not pay politics, ethnic politics. It is clear. Because it's, it's dialectic, as I said about Africa. Mm. The Nigerian situation is equally dialectic. It is there. We don't research. We are an expert on conflict resolution. We know what is there. So the issue is that they now use the, 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 the African leaders who inherited power, mm. so to say. They just have to play the ethnic card. And what led to the first coup in Nigeria in 1966, January 15, 1966? It was uh, chaba, chabalistic and ethnic uh, tensions. So people said, uh, uh, like uh, when we read the, the books on, uh, on why we struck mm. on, the, uh, on the coup, mm. it was clear that Tafa Baliba was prime minister. The last of Kadimo uh, Zeku who led the coup uh, was from the East. And they saw the way the, the Southern government was doing things. Tribalizing issues. Using religion to govern. Religion, ethnic card to govern. Mm. <laughs> so the Africans themselves, I'm doing an address a case study, it's the same thing all over Africa. Mm. So it's I play the ethnic thing. Before you know, there was a problem. January 15, 1966. It was one of the bloodiest coup in Africa. It was very bloody. You understand? Mm. And that will happen in several African countries. Is it in Ghana? Is it in uh, the name of the countries? So Africans have not helped themselves from onset. Okay. Now, uh, some that's the issue. In a situation whereby uh, uh, Africans are playing the ethnic card, the religious card, and you don't have political instability, you don't have civil war. They just went through civil war. Yeah. And, and civil war, several countries went through civil war. Some are still going through civil war today because the leaders did not learn anything. And the Western powers are. Delegating them using imperialism, new colonialism, and what have you. Mm. So that is the fact of the matter. Okay. Now, yeah. for some nations that uh, may have gone through civil war to get it right, take for example uh, Rwanda. 
it was still the ethnic, uh, you know, is, sen is sentiment. It, is, is the ethnic was responsible. Very destructive. The, the, Hut the Hutits Tuts and, and the, the Tutsis, Tutsis. Tutsis in Rwanda, it was still the ethnic uh, issue that uh, broke that nation apart. It, yes. That nation had to break apart so yes. before they had to come uh, they, together. They now, to horror. Yeah, the question I'm asking is, uh, how come some nations now, some nations have gone through that civil war, and of course they've seen it all, and uh, those nations have decided to uh, return back. Now, most, some of those nations are nations that uh, people envy. Rwanda, just like what we said now. Uh, then even in South Africa, they may not have gone through civil war, but uh, uh, the imperialist uh, issue that they went through, the colonization that they went through, actually brought them together. But for a nation like Nigeria, we've gone through a civil war. We've also seen uh, a, a, you know, civil war, what war is. But Nigeria has not decided to come together. I mean, developmentally, in all spheres of nationhood, what do you think is responsible? Well, in Nigeria, the situation is uh, itself inflicted self-inflicted self-inflicted because uh we've not we've not had the uh, honest leaders mm. we've had uh, leaders who have been parochial uh, leaders who are sectional leaders without vision i cannot even please any nigerian leaders since independence who, who, who is a visionary the only guy who, who shows some level of uh, missionary and vision was not allowed to rule mm. but mm. governor was a tribalist but if, 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 if he had made it uh, that the general president would have, would have been a fantastic uh, president. But look at the leaders. They're not sincere with Nigerian people. They're not sincere with the country. They are not nationalistic in their outlook. They are parochial. They are, they are, they are, they are religious. Now, when you say our leaders are parochial, not sincere. Parochial, they are not nationalistic. Uh, but let us be careful so that we don't. Uh, they are parochial. Yeah, let us be careful so that we don't generalize. Selfish. We don't generalize. No, that is a Nigerian no, situation. Yeah, no, it's a good circle. Now, if we take right from independence now, uh, some people say that we've actually had opportunities, maybe two, three opportunities to actually had uh, good leaders. Take, for example, I remember when uh, Musa, I mean, Yaradwa, you know, came in as a president. He didn't last. Uh, his government would have probably been the right solution that Nigeria as a nation actually wanted. Don't you think so? Well, <laughs> Yaradwa, we all know how he came. Mm. Uh, it, it, so it came to one of the worst regulation in the general industry. Mm -hmm. And that's why when, when he became president, the leader of the wanted to, wanted to do something about the electoral process mm -hmm. so that there would be some sanity. He brought to uh, the ways, the, uh, all those uh, committee, you know, to look at the general electoral system. But uh, I don't see anything fantastic about uh, uh, Musa Yaradua, uh, uh, Musa Yaradua presidency. He, 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 he was trying to do one or two things, but he was not uh, a first class president. When I say first class, we have first class president, we have first class in, in the Western world, we have, we have, we have, we have uh, president or leaders who have mission, you know, who have, who have vision, who, are, who, who see beyond today, who, who see tomorrow. But I am not trying to believe to Yaradua's achievement, but Unfortunately, it didn't last. But I didn't see anything special about his presidency. Mm. Though he tried to, he brought the amnesty team for the United Deterrence and one or two economic issues. But he's not a first class leader. By Nigeria, own, Nigeria, by Nigeria, by but but that, that's my opinion. Yeah. The Nigerian system uh, you know, has not uh, allowed a first class leader to emerge through, oh, it, through it, manipulations it, of the electoral process. Mm. The Nigerian system has not allowed first class leaders to appear since independence. That's the truth. Now, it, when you say first class leaders, when I say no, first class, no. I, like, in terms of, in terms of intelligence, mm. in terms of leadership qualities, in, in terms of whole history, they are leaders. They are leaders. I, I, I am a conflict resolution uh, expert. Yeah, we know. Because we know, in the for, for instance, I read the late Fidel Castro as a first class leader. You have leaders. When you see a leader, you know a leader. When you see Barack Obama, you know you, 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 Obama was a leader when we were president of the United States. You understand? But Nigeria, we've not had a first-class leader All right, so in what terms of uh, leadership uh, quality, leadership acumen, and what have you. Yeah, so what you are no, saying? We'll be having 
third class leaders. Mm -hmm. It's my opinion. <laughs> third class leaders. Well, what well, well, they're saying is that the, the, the issues that Africa has been going through has been caused by the leaders. The leaders. All right. But For instance, let, let I'm using Nigeria as, as a case study. Yeah, let us see the followers too. Now, uh, don't you think we've also had uh, a case of uh, African followers that they've not been following their leaders uh, well? Don't you think so? Uh, African leaders, um, the followers in Africa, they be doing their bit. But in a situation whereby the holders of power, <laughs> those who, who hold the reins of power, mm. they don't listen. They hold the reins of power. They don't want uh, innovations. They don't want reforms. Okay, look at Nigerian case study. The electoral Electoral malpractices, electoral insanity, electoral, you know, uh, uh, you know, manipulations have been a problem in Nigeria, have been a bane of Nigerian problem. Mm. But as the, as the, those who are already raised up, have they allowed Nigerians to have a, a sanitized electoral process? Look at what happened in February 25, 19, uh, 2023 presidential elections. What happened? The Nigerians there was an election. And the, 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 the body that's supposed to midwife mm. the electoral process, mm. independent electoral commission, promised Nigerians one thing and did the other thing. Yeah, but the because it promised us that, uh, that uh, they, they are going to do the electro electro electronically transmit results. Mm. In spite of the fact that those things were put in the electoral heart. Mm. But it was uh, ambiguity. Yeah, but, and but I, I double know. speak. Yeah, but, but that, that that would witness. Yeah, but we've since passed that now because uh, the case. Was no, I'm, I'm trying to talk. Those that why, agree, why why we not blame the followers so much? Because the followers are trying their best mm. to get it done. Mm. To they be pushing for reforms. For instance, in Nigeria, we push for reforms, push for things to be done well. But the, but the, those are who hold the reins, who are at the center of things, they manipulate the process. In the Nigerian situation does like many capitals. They hold the knife, they hold the, the yam. Mm. They manipulate the thing. The constitution Nigeria is using for today, today is it a document that Nigerian people pro produce? It yeah, was a but document doctored by the military. Yeah, for the, instance, yeah, no, the 1999 constitution that we are using now. But, but that, that, that constitution, over time, it has been re re reviewed. I mean, if we say that the 1999 constitution that people did not, uh, most Nigerians they don't have impute in it, but we've seen Nigeria that don't constitution have impute. No, most as but it has been reviewed many it was, times. It was as, far as, as far as I can remember, that constitution has been reviewed for more than three times now. Three, three it, times. It's probably reviewed. I mean, so so uh, at, what those, do we have? at those stages, don't you think that Nigerians had impute then? What do we have? There are a lot of issues in the constitution. Today, the, the, the electoral process is there. The it, 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 thing is still hanging. Nigerians, that's why I was going to build the followership. Mm. The followership are trying. The society yeah. are trying. Yeah. But what, those the race. What is hanging in the electoral process and constitution? That it was not signed into law? It was signed to law. So what is the but the in? guy who supposed to midwife the election mm. did not look at the content. Mm. He did not follow to the letter. What, uh, what is written in the electoral act? That should be to be transferred. transmitted. But I and, and look at the road judiciary because we are coming. See, eh, the Nigerian system is like a gang. Yeah, the, the reason why, the reason why, uh, I know we're not going to waste time on this Niger <laughs> on the last election, but we need to. Uh, but this know, is the issue because I'm the one to build the followership. No, which are, the followers, yeah. followerships have been fantastic. No, which are, millions of Nigerians are watching this program this yes. afternoon. So we need to put things, you know, so that we don't, um, uh, you know, try to misinform. Now let's go back to the last electoral ad that we are talking about. Now, uh, you are making reference to INEC that INEC did not follow word for word that the results should be transferred electronically. Is that what you're saying? But yes. did you read through? Because I've had reason to read through. I've read through too. And of course, I saw there is a paragraph of that electoral act that on the event that INEC may, may not be able to transfer the result electronically, that manual compilation may be done. Uh, don't you think that was what INEC did? See, what happened on February 25, 2023 mm. was, was a conspiracy of the highest level. What, what happened? That it's my opinion. Yeah, we had Conspiracy of the highest level, masterminded by Hanek mm. and the powers that be. Because we voted. Because the election, all of us go to our different uh, geographical background. That's correct. So we went there and we, we saw what happened at, at, at those places. Mm. We saw what happened. In most cases, the election was peaceful. Mm. 
So what now happened? What made INEC officials not to do the needful? What is the needful? They, they, they refuse to transmit results. Yeah, For instance, I, I where I voted, I just explained. There was no itchy. There was no. But, but, but nothing that's, happened. That's, that's what. That's the way you see it. But um, INEC has told us that this is the reason why they couldn't. But you remember, INEC almost swore. Mm. <laughs> it's on tape. Mm. INEC officials they swore on tape that they didn't. People that go in the day and the result does not happen in those states. Don't, okay, what brought it was people's power that brought uh, Obaseke as governor mm. for a second time. Mm. And what happened in Oshun and, and uh, in uh, Ekiti, Ekiti mm. State? Mm. Those elections took place before the presidential elections. Mm. So the Germans were ready. They said, Yes, hooray, this is the time. Finally, to do the bid of Nigerians. So, for the presidential election now, Nigerians were not allowed to vote. Is that Nigerians right? voted, but their vote did not count. The okay. INEC, is my opinion, mm. and I'm sure it's the opinion of most Nigerians, most followers of Nigeria, because anyway, INEC because did not do the meeting. Yeah, let's leave that now, because the election has since. Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, no, we're talking about emerged. followership. The uh -huh. has emerged. So, the, the point I'm trying to the make, winner, so are viewers, the point I'm trying to make is that. Just hold on. The winner has emerged. And of course, uh, the winner has been sworn in as the president. That's the new president that we have in the country now. The case, uh, the constitution allowed for uh, challenges to have come. And uh, I remember that uh, those challenges were made. And the case went to court. It went to the tribunal. And uh, it went to the Supreme Court. And uh, the Supreme Court has since uh, made the pronouncement. So let's uh, leave that uh, aside now. Now, uh, let's look at uh, some other things that uh, we may talk about now. Because uh, uh, we're trying to look at uh, the developmental issues that we've yeah, had over yeah, years yeah. Uh, in Africa, what are responsible. And the first uh, pinpoint uh, we're seeing here is that our colonial masters. Yes, they that, play a very uh, terrible role. Uh, they divided us, they use ethnicity divide to rule. divide us and all that. But uh, uh, you will also recall that uh, uh, these people already met, take for example, in, like in Nigeria. The colonial masters, they made a pre-colonial uh, uh, system. government system that was already in place. Traditional system. And that was what they key into. Do you understand? I mean, we saw how the Igbos, how they rule themselves, the Yorubas, mm. of course, the Aosas, how they, they rule themselves. Uh, the only thing that they probably did was to introduce us into democracy and all that. And as we stand, democracy has uh, remained the best form of government all over the world. But the issue in Africa is that Africa's democracy is still very, very much questionable. Very backward. No, which I would have Take it up from there. Africa's democracy is backward because the players, you know, the actors, are not sincere with Nigerian people. They are not sincere with Africans. Let's, let's look at Africa. Let's look at Cameroon. Let's look at uh, uh, Guinea, Bissau. Be, 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 the other uh, Congo, the other day, uh, you can count them. The, the, the players, the key actors, they've not helped matters. They've not practiced democracy the way it's supposed to be practiced. There's no true democracy in Africa. Demo democracy is being manipulated to subdue the people. Democracy is being, uh, is being manipulated to play you know, the, the game favorable to the players. That's why we have under development. Because uh, the, uh, in a situation whereby uh, leaders will come on board, they will start playing ethnic card, religious card. They will look at the, the, the developmental issues. For instance, in Nigeria, we'll be talking about uh, education, that the fragment should fund education. The, the Nigeria education is in crisis. The universities are underfunded. The health facilities, the, 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 the primary health, uh, the primary health uh, program is, is, is more or less dead. Listen to the uh, president of the Nigerian Medical Association, mm. the, the former world well, that Nigerian, my friend, and who, who was, uh, who was is my good friend, yeah. who, uh, who became the world president, he said it. The healthcare system is in ruins because there's no consistency. What some other uh, administration will do, other administration will come, they, they, will, mm. they, they will spoil it. Oh. So we don't have leaders who are, who are key, who are key to developmental issues. Okay, so let me pause you there so that uh, we quickly go for a short uh, break. Don't forget the program is Africa Discuss on independent television. Please stay tuned.
Sorry, thank you so much here. The program still Africa this course on independent television. We are looking at developmental issues on the continent of Africa, uh, the causes, uh, the effects, and of course, uh, the possible solutions to some of these uh, problems. We've been able to uh, opine uh, that um, colonialization may have been one major cause of the problems that we are talking about on the continent of Africa. But uh, uh, some other explanations uh, have their own roots to the problems too. Now, Anuita, let's talk about the effects now, because uh, one of the major effects of these uh, issues we're talking about here is the fact that uh, Africa has remained a second fiddle uh, role. It has been playing a second fiddle role position to most advanced continents of the world. Take, for example, <clears throat> in terms of science and technology, Africa may not be able to go close to uh, North America. It may not even be able to go close to uh, some countries in Asia. The other day we saw uh, that uh, India, uh, you know, has been in the moon for countless of times and all that. They, all have, are they have nuclear weapons. Yeah, all those are technical, uh, you know, uh, advancement, technology advancement and all that. And uh, uh, we've hardly seen a nation in Africa making some strides uh, toward that uh, direction. Now, <clears throat> one of the major ones we can also see uh, one of the major effects is uh, the recent brain drain brain of drain. Africans leaving the continent all in search of greener pastures, greener pastures, going to other continents of the world, going to North America, going to so Europe, going to South America and all that, all for uh, greener pasture. Now, uh, how can we uh, begin to think of putting an end to all these uh, effects? Well, it's very simple. You know, just as I said, uh, the, those who hold the reins of power all over Africa, they have refused to toe the line of progress. They have bluntly refused to follow the path of development. They have chosen to, to go, you know, to, back, to go backwards. Because talking about, uh, you know, brain drain and what have you, if the, the universities are well funded, Research is being given the money their attention. Lecturers are well paid. Nobody will do brain drain. Nobody will exit the system. Because the system it has become hostile. The system has become suffocating. The other day I read a uh, statistics that how many doctors do you have in the hospitals? I read an article about uh, UBT the other day where to see a doctor is like going to the eye of a needle. Because the doctors are not there. They are not there, so they have taken off. Because the system is, is, is suffocating. The, 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 the system is hostile. Hostility is the word. And the, the players, they are not ready to do anything. That's the funny thing. Yeah, but don't you also it, think- They are not ready to fund education. How many years, how many more do we have as to strike? Mm. As Nigerian, as for instance, Nigeria as a case study, we have legislators who are legislating trillions of, 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 of dollars to buy cars for themselves. Can that money fund the universities? Can that money fund research? You talk about America just now, talk about technology and the rest. Is it no education that's, that is the bedrock? That's the problem. Yeah, but let us also look at what seems to uh, be wrong with the average African. Uh, there is a disposition to uh, life that it seems the average African has. Now, uh, the average African still see the white man as superior. <laughs> that's, 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 I think, a lot of viewers... Not, not uh, average. Let, let me explain now. Let me explain now. <laughs> because, um, uh, I don't know, it appears that is... That is a, a problem in our DNA, so to say. Not until we uh, try to remove that from our mind, uh, from our mindset, then, of course, we cannot begin to look inward. Now, uh, for most, I mean, Africa is the black continent of the world. For most Africans, not until they leave their continent and go and sojourn with the white man, begin to live with the white man, they may not see themselves as maybe... Uh, they've arrived, so to say. So you discover that this set for greener pasture now. Now, some of these greener pasture we're talking about now, they, 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 they are in Africa here. So don't you think it's time for us to begin to look inward? Let's look into ourselves as a continent. Who wants to look inwards? <coughs> Is you, it you? You and I. How do we look inwards? When those who are supposed to, to make this work, they are not, okay, 
Look at power, for instance. Power is in Rikerti. It's independence. And power is supposed to be a fundamental bedrock of uh, technological breakthrough. Even when government has refused to do something, there are some Nigerians who wanted to do things. They wanted to do small scale business, small scale enterprises, and what that you. But they are being frustrated because of power. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Now, instead of our the leaders to legislate, positive legislations, they are, they, are, they are interested in their own welfare. As I said earlier, that trillions of, of, of dollars or made those uh, uh, subsidized cars for those lawmakers, is that enough to fund the system, the education, to fund the health system? Is that money not enough hmm, to, to, to handle the power issue? There's no vision. Mm. Nigeria is a mini a miniature of Africa. OK, look at uh, Mali now. Uh, look at Niger now. After they threw this guy out of the scene, mm. the former guy. Uh, Ali Bongo. Uh, uh, not Bongo in Niger. Uh, Mohammed, uh, what was that his name? I've forgotten now. Just, uh... Uranium. Mm. That's. The private leaders could not do anything with. Look at the wonders happening in Niger now. I read an article recently. Niger, Mali, Burkina Faso, they are, be, they are climbing developmental level. They are being ranked now. Because a group of human beings, visionary leaders have taken over the presidential palaces. What do you mean now? You, you what mean, I mean is this. Men coming into yes, because, <coughs> okay, in Niger, for instance, we have, we, have, we have a military government. I am not an apologist for military rule. Mm. But since those who are, since democracy we have is not giving up development, mm. but we have seen examples in Mali, in Niger, in Burkina Faso. Those, those guys, they are radicalizing issues now. Now, are you trying uh, to make a case, Nungu Tai Butaku, are you trying to make a case for military to... I'm not, I, no, I, I said so. I am not making a case for I'm military. Not, because, I'm okay. not saying that. Because some persons, some persons have also said that... Um, uh, this recent, uh, uh, you know, of military coming into government in, the, in government space now in Africa is not the right way to go because a lot of persons actually like what happened. You made reference to Niger. Uh, we also saw what happened in uh, 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 DRC. In DRC. Uh, we saw what happened in Sudan and all that. Uh, the most recent of it all is the one that happened in Niger, whereby uh, Nigerians actually took to the streets, you know, clapping for uh, the military junta uh, that for the fact that they have come in now. Uh, this, some, this is not the right way to go because whether we like it or not, military uh, is an aberration. Is an aberration. But so the point I'm making for, for a continent that seek the point I'm making should we encourage it? I don't want the, uh, I don't want the listeners and viewers to get me wrong. Mm. The point I'm making is this: the so-called uh, civilian leaders they feed Africa and Africans, but we are not seeing pragmatic approach to leadership. That is bigger result. By the military? By the military. In Mali, in Niger, in Burkina Faso, and other places. That, that's what I'm saying. Okay, what is governance? What is government and governance? If you cannot take care of the people. Government is in place to serve the interests of the people. They are social needs, security needs, by the mother needs. But it, 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 it's not talk of war, for instance. Now, the federal government refused to fund education, for instance. Yeah, the federal government refused to fix power. The federal government refused to fix the, uh, the, the ex sector. Mm. Now, the, the first strategy has been removed. Nigeria are now in, 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 in torment. Most Nigerians cannot ride their cars. What is the meaning of government, Evans? What is the meaning of democracy? Is it for the government, for the people, and the people that was espoused by the legendary Abraham Lincoln at the Ghetto Book Address in 1895? No, in, 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 in 1660-something. Abraham Lincoln. Now, so, which, so uh, the but, military, but the, what I'm trying to make is that... Yeah, the military that you are trying to make... But I'm not saying that you should say that perpetually. Yeah, now, but, but at least they are, the military are, is checking colonialists mm. in Mali. Imperialism, France. France has, France has no way in Niger now. Yeah, but France has no way in Mali. But do you know that there is also a support? There is a support that has an ulterior interest. 
we support. Say, for example, if uh, uh, France has left uh, uh, Mali, what about the uh, Wagner force uh, from uh, Russia and all I'm that? For me. I mean, <laughs> that, 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 there's you a know, there. In the international circles, a lot of things come to play. Mm. You have allies, you have supporters. I know there are the Wagner t t people, they are from the Soviet hand. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, Russia. <laughs> But look at it, that. It is not even Wagner anymore. It is Russia that we see. I know. So, I know. Uh, it is all expansion <laughs> now. Because but, that... okay. Let's look at the, the, the Cuban crisis, for instance. Let's quickly look at that. Mm. The Cuban crisis in 1964. Mm. Fidel Castro came to power in 1959. He led one, one of the most progressive revolutions in, in human history. Fidel Castro and his uh, boys. You know, Cuba is just like Ireland to the United States. Mm. United States wanted to squeeze Cuba. My brother, remember the Bay of Pigs invasion? The Bay of Pigs invasion, 1964. Mm. That almost consumed uh, 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 Fidel Castro led government. Mm. But Faso cried to the, uh, the, to, to the communist bloc for support. For support. <laughs> so, you, oh, do you think our, uh, the military guys in, in, in Mali? In uh, Burkina Faso, in Nigeria, other places, do you think they will survive without support from that end? Now, they, they, you call it support now, but for some of us, you <laughs> see, another uh, brand of imperialism. We, we, yes, because whether you like it or not, uh, uh, those supports are not for nothing. Concessions, some form of concessions. But we are seeing results at, in those countries. Now, at, 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 at the detriment of, of the development that we are looking for. After this program, Google what is happening in Nigeria. Mm. Google what is happening in Mali. Mm. When it was in Burkina Faso, you see what I'm saying. No, I know what is going because on. But this, the point I'm trying progress to make, is yeah, being made, but we've had democracy over a thousand of years, over many years, that, that, that are not taking us to nowhere. Look at where democracy are taking Nigeria to. We are buying for it at almost 700 naira. Is, what is democracy? What is, what is governance? Governance is not supposed to benefit the few, it's supposed to benefit the majority. Governance is supposed to have a human feeling. Governance is, is, is to fix things. That's why Africa is going backward. Africa cannot develop with the present couple of leaders in, civil, in presidential, presidential palaces all over Africa. Mm. Africa and Africans cannot survive, cannot develop, quote me, <laughs> with the present crop of leaders, so-called civilians leaders, who have no vision, who have no mission. All right, Africa let, cannot let, survive. Let us also so talking about governance, governance should be talking about taking care of the, the greatest number of the people in the society. Now, let's see uh, some blocks now that uh, we also have in the African continent. Uh, take, for example, the ECOWAS. Uh, it was uh, put together uh, for West African nations, for member states to, uh, to really develop economically and all that. That's one block. Then also, you also have the African Union that came together as a result of uh, still the search of development. Now, if these nations of Africa, they've not been trying, if Africa as a continent, they've not been trying, uh, does it really necessarily mean that uh, these uh, blocks that were put together uh, also uh, was meant to fail? What is going on even with these blocks in the first place? Why are they not meeting their target? <laughs> 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 the blocks you are talking of. Yeah. Are they not people by that some African leaders? <laughs> Who is, the, who, who is the chairman of ECOWA, for instance? <laughs> you know <laughs> President uh, Bola Ahmed Tunibu, Adekunle Tunibu. President Bola Ahmed, Adekunle Tunibu. President Tunibu is the chairman of ECOWA. He's 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 a block. And we expect Wanda to come up from that block. No, you cannot say so. That's because a... I, I said earlier that we both had first class leaders. It's my opinion. For me, a president Tunubu is not a first class leader for Nigeria. Now you can't say so. It is my opinion. Is he that voted for yeah, the president? We are looking at somebody that was voted into power, somebody that has been sworn in into power. But is, is he all Nigerians that voted for him? Uh, no, as, he's your president. He's my president. I, I'm not saying president. he's not my president, but I'm saying he's not a first class leader. Even as we talk, the United States, hmm. as, as, um, as a fantastic, so to say, as Joe Biden is. Hmm. American and calling him is not a first class material. So I don't say anything wrong. Me saying a Tinubu. Anyway, let, let, us, leave, let, uh, uh, let us leave that. So that's not, uh, if, that's you have, if you have leaders, yeah, yeah, you're yeah. talking about blocks. The blocks are people by the same African leaders. They are not from another planet. <laughs> they say <laughs> human beings who, 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 who are not interested in taking Nigeria out of the 
dungeon of the uh, of so underdevelopment. In, in all of all these, Nowitsa Ibutsako, which best approach do you think uh, Africa can begin to think of employing now? Is it a political approach, you know, in handling some of these issues we've uh, enumerated, an economic approach, or technological approach? Uh, where do we start from? We need political approach. We need technological approach. We need the scientific approach. We need the, all these approaches cannot work. Unless what? Unless the military is done. What, what is the Except, military? for instance, education must be funded. The health care must be funded. Hospitals must be built. The power sector must be fixed. The money that Nigerian legislators are now voting to buy uh, bulletproof cars is not to do these things. That is a part of the matter. Yeah. Because they are not focused, they are not. They don't have vision, they don't have mission. You, you, no, it's, uh, let us be. It's my opinion, uh, but, my, my, but how will you put a situation? Tackle, but how will you put a situation tackle. whereby I see a president and a, 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 a president, one of the Tanzanian president recently, mm. when the guy came to power, some people came to him. It's on tape. They wanted to buy new vehicles for him. They already brought the voucher, brought everything. They said he's to sign. The guy said he's not signing. Is there no vehicle in the presidential office? They say yes. Is that, that, that is a first class material. The man refused to be corrupted. The, the people in the system came with all the things. They said, oh, God, I've signed this thing. You need first, yeah, G the man, The man said he has not bought one new car. Now, no, I would like so, to draw a conclusion now. Uh, let us, because the vehicles. Africans, no, the vehicles, Africans you, no, the vehicles we are talking about now. Have you, I read somewhere where some of the senators were trying to explain that, look, we must be able to understand that there are procurement issues, you know. We need to explain it to the latter so that people will understand. Pro -pro procurement issues. Procurement issues. Well, if, for example, you give me the contract to, pure, to procure an item like this, you give to people the contract to procure one item, you are bound to have two prizes. I know. And so let us be careful. Uh, so that uh, we do not, uh, uh, you know, why buy such so big so, so that it won't be a situation, of, a situation of uh, throwing uh, the the baby. You are throwing away the bathwater, and we also, also train away the baby too. Which baby? So we have you know, some motors in Nigeria. You know, some motors is in the east. Can they patronize you know, some motors? I read some few days ago because I am I am also in the media. You know, some motors are producing electric cars in Nigeria. The procurement or no procurement? Can they patronize Nigerian? Uh, this is what we are saying now. How can we have development when you cannot solidify innocent motors, for instance? Innocent motors. Mm. It's in the East. Why, why can they give innocent motors that contract? Yeah. That procurement you are talking about. Mm. So you know it's a word. We don't have. We have. We have we have wilderness in that shit. Anyway, anyway, Africa. anyway let me say very big thing. So you. the way so forward you. is for, for Africa to no. struggle to produce first class leaders. Mm. We, we, we don't look at parochialism. Parochial, mm. We don't look at ethnicity. Mm. We don't look at religion. Mm. We'll be interested in taking Nigerians, taking Africans for the dungeon of that development. We should come up for first class leaders. We should make sure the electoral process works. Okay. That's the way forward. Right, so thank you so much, uh, Nowitsa Ibotako. Even uh, you thank try you so to much. explain it in your own way. <laughs> now, we also uh, want to let our uh, esteemed viewers out there know that uh, in all these issues that we talk about, we, what, whether we're trying to look at it from the Nigerian perspective or from the Africa Africans, uh, Africa's perspective. We really don't have opinion as a station. We do not have opinion. So we invite our guests to always come here and, of course, uh, ventilate uh, their opinion. So Nowita Ibutako has just said it uh, from his own point of view, uh, the way he said it uh, this afternoon. It's possible that if we call you, you may also have a different explanation uh, to the situation. So that's what we do here. So in any case, we want to say very big thank you, Nuita. Thank, thank you, you so much it's for pleasure. coming on the show today. Thank All right, you. so that's the program today. And of course, uh, this week, Africa, this course on independent television. The program is going to return sometime next week. My name is Evan Sunohoge. Good afternoon and having a lovely day.